A blessed day to all of you, sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. The Church celebrates today the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle. Our Mass presider is Rev. Father Conrad Alvarez, SVD. Our celebration will now begin. begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. What we believe in is not always what we see. And what we see may not always what we believe but we have faith and trust in God no matter what in this feast of Saint Thomas the Apostle that has asked for his intercession that we may overcome our own doubts our fears and embrace the true faith in the risen Christ. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. 
you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen, amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify Him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is His kindness for us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. We honor the Holy Gospel. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. 
Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have been a missionary to Taiwan for over 20 years. I went to Taiwan in 1997 he studied Mandarin Chinese and continued my theology in Chinese at Furen Catholic University. In 2018, I was granted a Taiwanese or a, a Taiwan citizenship. Now I have a double identity, Filipino by birth and a Taiwanese by citizenship or a naturalized Taiwanese. My given name is Conrad in Filipino. But it became my family name in Chinese. If you could see it, my Chinese name is Kong Lu De. So my Chinese name is Kong. Kong is Confucius. Lü is law. De is a virtue. So my Chinese name means a virtuous and law-abiding person. Wow. <laughs> According to Confucius, your name is something you live by. You live by your name. And in the Chinese culture, a person can change his or her name up to three times in his lifetime. They want their names to be meaningful. Thomas was also called Didymus, a Greek word which means twin. So I have a question. Does Thomas have a twin brother? No. It's just his name. And Thomas is true to his name. Thomas had a twin personality. Yes. And his nickname is Doubting Thomas. The writer Henry Noven or Noven, a Dutch priest. Uh, in his book, The Genesee Diary, mentioned that the fathers of the church commented that all of us are two people. All of us are two people. Why? A doubting one and a believing one. So we need the support and love of our brothers and sisters, our family, in our community to prevent our doubting person from becoming dominant and destroying our capacity for belief. So today, the Feast of St. Thomas the Apostle, the message for us is to reflect not so much on the doubting Thomas as on the living and dynamic faith of the community where we belong, the church in which or of which Thomas was a 
part. Let me say, uh, share you a personal story. In 1999, I went to Beijing, China for my pastoral exposure. I got into a serious illness and was hospitalized for a blood clot in my brain, in my left brain. The doctor said I need to undergo an operation. I got scared and so I did not consent to the brain surgery. I had to take daily medication to avoid seizure. It was a turning point in my life, not knowing whether I would survive or not, not knowing whether I would still see my family. And I was really down and emotionally distressed. But you know, what kept me going was the understanding and support of my brothers in the community. They took care of me while I was in the hospital. My brothers, they gave me the courage to face my fear. I had my treatment here in the Philippines through medication. And I returned to Beijing after my treatments so I could be with them once again. And thanks be to God, my health condition has returned to normal. I consider this healing moment an experience of seeing the resurrected Jesus which was possible or became possible through the fraternal love of the community or the community that has shown me. Although Thomas, a skeptic, did not initially believe in the resurrection of the Lord, he remained faithful to the call he had received from Jesus. And what call is that? The call to be a part of the community of the apostles. While his doubts would not allow him to believe that the other had seen the Lord, Thomas was never or never lost faith in their brotherhood. And it was ultimately in and through that community that Thomas finally encountered the risen Christ. And speaking of community spirit, one of our speakers in the NEMI course I attended in Rome, Father Dennis McBride, a redemptorist priest from Scotland, shared that Saint Bernard once wrote a very interesting note to his brothers, and I quote, If you do not have an impossible If you do not have an impossible brother in your community, go out and find one. Father McBride said that most of us do not have to go out and get one. And most of us have bus loads already. <laughs> so St. Bernard's point is interesting. He said, if you surround yourself in community with people just like you or who are just like you, how will you learn forbearance? How will you learn charity? How will you learn forgiveness? And Jesus argued, you are living a forbearing community if you are living in a community that had forgiveness 
at the ready. So today, let us acknowledge the Thomas in us. Let us acknowledge the twin personality in us, a believing one and a doubting one. When dominated by the doubting person, let us hold on to the support and love of our family, our community, our friends. And let us also strive to strengthen the band of our family and our community. For at the end of the day, it is they who will stay with us through thick and thin. Not everyone got to be with Jesus when he was alive on earth. No, we have never seen him with our eyes. We only saw Jesus in photos or movies. We have not been able to touch him with our hands. No, but we still believe Jesus calls us blessed. We are blessed even though we did not see him. We did not touch him. And that's true faith. That's true faith. It is easy to believe in something that you could see. Not so easy to believe in something that you could not see. But we know in our hearts, we know for real that Jesus is real that Jesus is true and that he promised us that he will be with us always. Amen? Amen. So just like air, we can see it, but we believe it exists. It keeps you alive. Or the oxygen that keeps you alive when you get infected by the virus, it's there. We can see Jesus, but he keeps us alive every single day. Yes, sometimes it's difficult to believe. And that is why we need to pray. We need to pray and ask God to strengthen our faith and give us a gentle reminders to help us believe every single day. I would like to end my homily reflection with a song. I hope it will inspire us to believe once more or to strengthen our faith and believe every single day. If you know the song, let us sing together. Touch a leaf or see the sky, then I know why. I believe. I believe. Let us all profess our faith in the Lord. With faith in the risen Christ, whose wounds are the signs of his victory, let us bring our intentions to the Father of mercies.
that as a church, we not be wanting in manifesting our faith to unbelieving people, we pray and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That there may be growth in the church of Asia, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That hardened sinners and unbelievers may overcome their doubt and embrace the true faith, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are overburdened with life, especially the lonely and the sick, may experience the joy of Christ's resurrection, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may share in the glory of everlasting life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our special intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, as we make our intercessions, deepen our faith that like St. Thomas, we may love and adore your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Ever. Amen. sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of His holy church. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. 
For in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new, and offer us sure signs of your love. And that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled, the great example lends us courage, their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat these bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, must become or may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
with St. Thomas the Apostle and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance and peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Ernesto our Bishop, and all our bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, but that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, word of love, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, grant us This is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to partake in this holy banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that it should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. of spiritual communion my Jesus 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. We are a pilgrim people. We are the Church of God, a family of believers, disciples of the Lord, united in one spirit. Ignited by the fire, still burning through the ages, still present in our lives. Come, Holy Ghost, Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. O God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission we thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. 
Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calunsod, pray for us. Saints Arnold Jansen and Joseph Bernanimitz, pray for us. The Lord be with you and with your spirit by your head and pray for God's blessing may God who has granted you to stand firm on apostolic foundations graciously bless you through the glorious merits of the holy apostle Thomas Amen. Amen and may he who endowed you with the teaching and example of the apostles make you under their protection witnesses to the truth before all amen so that through the intercession of the apostles you may inherit the eternal homeland for by their teaching you possess firmness of faith amen and may the blessing of our loving and almighty god be with you now and your family in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit come upon you and remain with you forever amen the Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Oh, 